welcome back so I'm um, here for the story that I missed that I was I promised to say on the first uh, video which I I told you I was going to share with you on the second video because the first video was getting too long <laughs> yeah so uh, again I'll say welcome to any new subscriber um, anybody who is just finding our, our channel for the first time uh, my name is princess and this is the deeper Life Bible Church um, singles channel we are all single we are most 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 of us are singles and uh, we have some facilitators who are married who'd like to who are here to share uh, their story and examples and advice just to help uh, other young people who are seeking to marry uh, the Christian way who wants to marry uh, who want to marry a Christian man, a Christian woman, and want to know how to do it the God own way. So we encourage Christian married, Christian young people to 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 know how God speaks to them. How in the area of marriage, like how do you know that God is leading you to this person? Uh, so that's the objective of this um, this um, uh, channel to guide young people to marry in the Lord, uh, how to marry a Christian man, a Christian woman, the God own way, how to court efficiently and how to eventually have a Christian home. Um, we are on Instagram as DLBC singles. We are on Facebook as a group and a page. The handle will be in the description section below. DL, Dipala Bible Church Singles is the name on Facebook and or as a page and as a group. Yes, so we go right into the story. And um, I like to say welcome again to everyone. Thank you for being part of the family. Thank you for your um, for your comments that have been seen. Thank you for uh, liking these videos and sharing them with your friends and your loved ones. Um, without wasting time, I'd like to tell you the story. So it was in, I think in sometime around 2000 and... Um, was it 2006? Four, no, I think between 2004, thereabout, 2004, 2004 ish. Yes, if I'm correct, if I'm correct. Uh, I met this person, I was actually looking for an old friend. And while I was looking for this old friend, I stumbled on this person. I thought they were the person, the person I was looking for, and I asked for a friend request. We kind of became friends, we started to talk, and as I was asking him questions, I realized that he was not the person that I wanted, or that I thought he was. And he felt, okay, we, we, we are now friends online at least, and I think I like you, I like your personality, and I would like to uh, keep the friendship, and you never know. So we started talking much more and I think one time uh, he said we, if he doesn't mind if we could meet up and of course I had to be careful and we met up um, in, in a friend's, a friend's brother's or a friend's cousin's restaurant. Um, yeah, so we met up there and we, uh, I was, already, uh, I think he was already there before I got there. And we talked, uh, we said our highs, we introduced ourselves again, <laughs> and we talked a little bit. And while talking to him, I realized that we are not, um, we don't have the same objective in life. We, don't, we, we didn't share the same purpose. Like, I know our purpose can never be the same, but we weren't going, let me put it this way, we weren't going the, the same direction in life. Like, what I wanted was not what he wanted from a wife, and what I wanted from the man that would be my husband was not exactly what he is, <laughs> or he what he turned out to be, okay? It's just to tell you that sometimes um, what you see behind um, social media page uh, profile, is not always always the real thing when you see physically when you meet that person physically they are not all the time what you have been seeing behind the computer behind that profile those pictures those lovely pictures and some of those quotes that people put sometimes they just copy it from somewhere and that's not what they really believe that's why sometimes face-to-face -face communication is very important trust me 
is very important. It brings out some things that will not be said on social media, right? Sometimes the voice of somebody sounds really nice on the phone. And, but when you meet them, you are like, no, I don't think I like this person. And maybe I like them as a friend, but not as um, a husband or, or anything like that. And of course, I'm saying this because me and this person talked to a point, And even though we didn't go to the same church, he, we kind of seem to have a, a synchrony like we there was a synchronization of the, our christian beliefs we kind of on the same page with that not all but some of it most of it uh and of course when two young people start to talk a lot it kind of breeds some kind of um emotional attachment and I, that, that's the right way that's the right word to say I, I began to get or we began to get emotionally attracted to each other somewhat Okay, uh, but when we met, we came to understand that maybe we're just meant to be friends. Uh, and today, we are not really very close anymore. We kind of went our separate ways. Um, I, I've been, I, I moved to Europe, and he, I, I mean, permanently, in quotes, moved to Europe, and he went somewhere to the Middle East. Uh, we got, we kept contact for a while, and later on, we stopped talking like that like we can say happy new years to one another and all of that so just to tell you that you have to be be careful um about concluding that this person that you found on social media is just the perfect person without meeting them okay some people went wait until they have come for the ceremony to meet the person they are planning to spend the rest of their life with you're meeting this person that you intend to spend the rest of your life with at your marriage ceremony. Guys, don't do it. <laughs> do not do it. Try to meet this person. Try to know their family. Try to know where they are living. Try to have, even if it's just two weeks in the country where this person is living, get your hotel. Tell them, you know, your hotel, your lounge, your 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 accommodation whatever it is and try to meet up of course i will not say meet up in your bedroom okay i will not say that i'll say meet up in the public go eating together you know go out together watch this person's mannerism watch this person is this somebody that you love is this exactly what you're expecting um sometimes this face to face brings takes out this veil like the veil can just drop like Oh, oh, this is not what I was thinking. <laughs> this is not what I this I was daydreaming, but like this is real now. This is this is the real thing, and thereby you can ac assess and decide if this is really what you wanted. Second story was the one that marked me the most, and that is when I made up my mind that I was not going to ever do this, allow myself to fantasize or think that I've met the right person um via the internet okay although in my own relationship i did a long distance relationship with my husband that i'm married to today but we did not meet on the internet okay that's a story for another day so this person i met him on facebook precisely and we got talking and because we were friends he was he is the friend of many of my friends on facebook and we got talking i don't know why he picked me up i don't know why we started chatting i still can't remember i have to dig into my my chat logs to really find find out how we began to say to talk to each other that was this hello hello thing and then we greeted we talked for a couple of months and and this was this was this person I even met in, um, I think it was in Lagos, yeah, because I I did my my a part of my studies in Lagos, you know, I'm a child of a missionary, and my father being a missionary, we traveled a lot growing up, but at a point in our lives, our dad wanted us to have a Nigerian, a Nigerian education at least one part of our education he wanted me to be um to be submerged in the nigerian culture i have a french background and i'm very french in my head and i really didn't really appreciate some of the nigerian culture uh, <laughs> and my dad wanted us to especially me let me talk about myself my dad wanted me to have a taste of the nigerian culture 
and, and and I thank him, my lady. I thank him for doing that for me, because maybe I wouldn't have married a Nigerian brother. <laughs> my my husband is is Nigerian European. <laughs> okay, he has another nationality, but he's originally from Nigeria. Okay, so I wouldn't have been comfortable with a Nigerian um, family like my in-laws you know because everything in nigeria was kind of strange to me okay it was strange to me but thank god that i did my four year first degree like my first degree you know i came through direct entry because i have i had an international baccalaureate and so i did my first degree my four years in nigeria and my dad wanted us to um to have a taste of the nigerian youth service the nigerian nysc yeah so i served and also so those are the few years that i had to get to know the nigerian culture okay so now back to the story i met this guy in lagos he had finished from the university of lagos and he i think had started working with total at the time i was in between should i i was getting tired of nigerian culture <laughs> i'm so sorry but i was getting tired of my, don't forget i wasn't really used to it i was learning it but a part of it i didn't really like some of the culture and i wanted to go i wanted to go back like outside i i, I just wanted to go uh, but before then I wanted to work I needed I wanted to have some experience work experience and I was looking for a job at the time I was looking for a job and I was frantically looking for a job so this guy told me that oh he there were some openings in total at the time and that being bilingual that I might be up, be like stand I stand the opportunity of getting a good job um, with my as a human resource person or anything that um, something that i would like something that has to do with people a people's kind of job and so he was helping me he was helping me with um my looking at my my resume or my cv as we call it and um for some reason we'll talk about other things we'll talk about okay what do you want out of life when do you want to get married who do you want to get married to uh do you see yourself marrying an nigerian or are you planning to marry um another african or uh, a caucasian or wh what's your plan so do you want to marry someone that's french do you want to marry a bilingual do you want to marry a nigerian a unilingual person and all that how many children would you like to have and what are your dreams and plans do you want, want to have a phd do you do want to work with uh where, where do you want to work what are what was the country that you'd like to settle permanently in those are some of the discussions that we were having and um we talked a little bit about uh what we thought what was my thought about submission and what's the place of how do i see um the place of my husband in my life how do i place it what what's my what what are my thoughts about the the um about marriage about the place of the man the place of the woman finances and how should how should we sh how should a couple share their their financial um purse okay some of those those are some of the topics that we we had as conversations that the time came when we had to meet okay and so when we met we met at an eatery maybe mr biggs or tantalizers one of those eateries we met there on a sunday after church we sat down we talked he ordered food and i had my money okay i had my money in my in my in my purse because i don't know what could happen never take the chance of going out to eat with somebody without having your own money okay that's a piece of advice for ladies always have your money money that you can pay for and eat what you can afford so that in case of anything you are able to pay okay so that aside so we sat down and we talked and as we were talking some things started to pop out of that conversation that made me feel like this guy he he, he likes to he likes his woman some kind of way and he'll kind of make me lose my identity like you know how I always say, discover yourself as a lady first, as an individual. Find yourself before you find a partner, right? 
I wouldn't say I'd found myself completely at that time, at that point in time in my life, but I basically know where I was going to. I basically knew what I wanted out of life. I basically had my dreams and I was charting the path towards as, as achieving my dreams. And he, he was this very controlling kind of person. And he'll tell me that, uh, well, that dream that you have is not, is, not, is not really so important. If I'm going to marry somebody, I want them to do this. I want them to go. This is the timetable I have for them. And this is what I expect them to do. And that submission is a wife dropping everything that she, she has as a plan. Like maybe she wants to have a master's. Maybe like she has to, you know, um, not work for a certain number of years and she had to she had to leave you know a certain kind kind of way he wanted like he he practically was dictating what he wanted his wife to do or to be and she didn't have the right to share what her thoughts were and he would say he made a statement that shocked me and that statement was if i pay the bills then I don't see why she should be complaining. Okay. Now he forgot that a woman, especially like me, for example, I, <laughs> you are a graduate, I'm a graduate. Okay. My, my, my father didn't send me to school to, to waste it in the kitchen. And that's not to say that I don't cook. I cook right now. I cook for my home. Okay. My husband knows how to cook, but he doesn't like to cook. Okay, so I do the cooking for my home. My husband thinks that he's cooking. The food doesn't taste good if he does the cooking. <laughs> and I do the cooking. Okay, I love to, I, I, I like, I won't say I love to cook. <laughs> but I cook, okay. I cook for my family. Um, but he, um, how he made it feel, how he made it, how he sounded, made me feel like he was objectifying me. Okay, he expects women to be to be like objects, like a monument. He wants you to be his pretty wife, and that he can show you off to his friends. He wants you to be really pretty, and that when he brought friends home, you should be like all ready to receive them. And because he felt that he's going to have a certain kind of life, and he wanted a woman who would be always there at his beck and call that will make his friends feel at home, that will serve them like you know food nice food and be a good entertainer which is okay i can i entertain people when they come to my home but is that objectifying like that or making me feel like i'm an object and i didn't have a say and that he blows the pipe and he makes all the decisions and i don't really have anything to say about it okay so he made it look like I give her everything. What does she need? Why does she? Why would a woman have to complain or talk? You know. So that was a problem to me. And after that meeting, I made up my mind that no, I don't think I want to marry him. And we had a lot of other conversations, which I'll share maybe in my videos next time, um, because this has taken long. But uh, we had very heated arguments. And at the end of the day, I made up my mind, even though I didn't tell him that this kind of person, no, I don't think I would keep him as a friend if the friendship continues uh, but i can't i can't marry him i'm not a thing i'm not an object i have a mind of my own and i expect a man that listens to me that wants my good that wants my happiness that wants me to also progress in my career not competing with him no that's not it but i want to be fulfilled also right even if i get married i want to have my children i want to have my home yes but there's this balance of career home life uh, personal life and all of that. I needed a man that will understand that and that will appreciate it. So I'm going to stop here. Um, share this video, love this video, uh, subscribe to this channel and I put your comments. Let me know if you have met somebody online and how did the relationship go? Did you marry them? And what, what are your takes? How did, what came out of it? Uh, I like to read your comments. I like to read them. I'm very happy to know what you think. And I hope to see you at another time. In the meantime, have a nice day. <laughs> have a nice afternoon, morning, evening, wherever you are in the world. It was a pleasure um, talking to you. <laughs> and I'll see you in another video. And ciao!
I hope God that we all have an answer of peace as we pray to find the right person. I pray for you and I hope I pray that you'd have good testimonies, good marriages, good homes, lovely men, lovely man as a husband, lovely woman as a wife, and that we'll be all happy to read your testimony and read your story. And in the meantime, till then, bye.